Hi, I'm Nate Adams, CEO of HVAC 2.0, often known as Nate the House Whisperer. And today I want to talk about what's probably going to become a new name for curve. So we have the duck curve. I think we should have something called the bell cliff or how to kill decarbonization. And in fact, it's basically how to kill any new technology adoption. Um, so I want to think about an efficiency program or a rebate program or anything that is aimed at decarbonization. Uh, so I've been in the efficiency world now for just shy of 20 years and uh, I've watched a lot of ugly stuff happen. But at the beginning of coming out with most programs, most people tend to be excited. You know, there's a little bit of talk about it. Contractors are getting geared up and you see a demand bump uh, come up. So things start to grow pretty quick. That's a fairly typical program start. The issue is after a little while, growth begins to slow and it hasn't necessarily gotten that uh, you know, it's not that popular in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I don't know of any state programs that have broken 10,000 projects per year um, for building performance. And that's not that great because uh, I mean, the two biggest states for that are New York and California, which are two of the most populous states in the country. Well, California is the most populous. So a lot of money has been thrown at this to not have it continue to increase. And then at some point, the program always ends. Um, the bar closes. You, you, uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And what happens is numbers crash. And more often than not, it takes contractors out too, because this can create a don't feed the bears problem, where you start feeding the bears, and you basically put them into uh, a cage and you're feeding them. And then one day the program ends and you leave them in the, the cages to starve to death. I've seen it again and again and again. Um, so this is what happens. The numbers crash. But right here, things look good. So let's take a look at a market-based program, which if you aren't familiar with my thinking, now I like market-based stuff. Uh, where have you been? Um, so welcome. I'm glad that you somehow ended up with this video, but it's kind of surprising that you wouldn't know that. Um, so the issue with market-based programs is getting things rolling is a lot harder because you have to do the actual work. You can't just throw money at it and expect something to happen. You have to develop the contractor network. You have to develop the business model. You have to develop the sales process. Um, all of these things have to get done and then things start to move very slowly. So early on, see, look, the program looks kick butt. This is amazing. But then, you know, it dies. But what you want to have happen is the green curve where it continues to go up and up and up and up. Um, that's that's what we want to see. Um, and I'll show in a minute that it doesn't keep going vertical like this because it can't. Uh, but you want it to accelerate very quickly. I mean, if we want market adoption, we need this slope to go as vertical as humanly possible. Um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But in the meantime, on the bell cliff, whatever program that you want to do, ask yourself, can you 1000 exit? Can you scale it infinitely? And if not, that's a problem, it's going to end. And so you end up with an unsustainable program and you create a bell cliff. We don't want a bell cliff. It's what we want to avoid at all costs. I mean, I was born in 1978. Um, you know, that was Jimmy Carter era. That's when a whole lot of efficiency things started happening. None of them have ever scaled and kept going. Um, and it's not all of it, but a big piece of it is creating programs, getting excitements, um, starting a business model, and then taking the money away, and the business model crashes. So... Can you 1000x whatever program design you have? And if no, don't do it. 
So this usually means two things. You can go federal. So I suggested the 3H program, the Hybrid Heat Homes program with CLASP, um, which is to pay the, the OEMs to stop making air conditioners and only make heat pumps moving forward. Huge decarbonization move for not a whole lot of money, and it modeled out a 10x payback. Um, the feds can afford $10 billion, and it's $10 billion over like seven years, or $12 billion over seven years. It's not that much money in the grand scheme of things. But most states and most utilities don't have that kind of cash to do. So the only other things you could do, one thing that I suggest is publish energy use at resale so that you can create... Um, resale value from the cash flow differences. If a house costs $50 a month less to operate than a similar house or, or a comparable house, that house should be worth the net present value of what that 50 bucks is. So it, even if it's a couple grand, it's a start. Um, but it's not hard to see 10, 30, 40, uh, and even $40,000 uh, net present value differences that way. Um, that is something that you can 1000x. It's just another field in the MLS. So that is a possibility. But when you want to 1,000x something, it's really hard. Um, there's not a lot of things that work. So important thing to note, though, and I, I mentioned this, but I need to repeat it. A efficiency program looks way better right here. I mean, look, this, this is just barely getting off the ground. It's not really moving. Um, we, it's tempting to look at this and judge, but then that happens. But long term, figuring out something that can scale infinitely, that is entirely market based, is the way that things, they grow and they keep growing. Because if we want to decarb, we can't stop. Um, we can't have a solar coaster doing this. Um, we can't do that. We, we need to continuously go up uh, for as long as we can until we really get into uh, the mass market. So and here's what this is related to. This is from... Uh, Jeffrey Moore's Crossing the Chasm. I can't recommend this book enough. It's one of my favorite books. And he studied technology adoption. And what happens is you get the early market. The, these are the ooh shiny crowd. These ones are the seriously ooh shiny crowd. And then uh, the next ones are the ones that like to have things before their friends. The issue is these people put up with crappy things, with incomplete products. Over here, they don't. So if you want to get to the mainstream market, which is, oh, ballpark 84%, um, you have to create something that's genuinely good. So when you look at these two curves, this is what they look like. Uh, so it, it, there's this curve. Look, it's the bell cliff. There you go. So it doesn't cross the chasm and it dies. If you want to continue to go up, um, you have to get to the mainstream market. So you can't give something a push and assume that it will get going because they don't, all right? Um, they just don't. I've been watching this for a long time. It, it doesn't work. And what this means is this is failure and this is success. Now, I had a comment because I just put a slide like this <coughs> excuse me, up on Twitter, and it's like, well, th this isn't possible. It can't continue going up. Yes, you're right. Um, what you're actually going to see is this S-curve, the sigmoid. Uh, the sigmoid, this curve here, is the bell curve plotted as far as how many people are adopting. So right in the middle of the bell curve, so 50-50 uh, on either side of it, you are at 50% market share. So see how quickly this is going up? So you're really screaming as you go through here, and then you hit an inflection point at uh, the laggards, the people that don't really want to buy stuff. This applies everywhere. I'm working on HVAC 2.0 onboarding, and I have, I think, four videos on the S-curve. S-curve is just such a critical thing to be aware of, and we need to create this. We don't want to have this come up, crash, um, we want to have the whole market be gone through. And here's what that looks like if you look at all sorts of different uh, technology. So, I mean, like a flush toilet. Um, like it didn't really take off until 1920. This was actually the last pandemic, more than likely, is what it was. Bathroom design changed um, after the, the Spanish flu pandemic. Um, but see how these kind of are a little bit slow in how they go? Um, you know, they, they take several decades. Look at like the tablet here. That just went screaming upwards. 
Um, this is what we want to see happen. We want to see it be darn near vertical for residential decarbonization and decarbonization in general. But resi is what, where my heart is and our work is. And what that ends up doing is, I call this the two clocks. So this is from my presentation about how to sell heat pumps to consumers and contractors. Um, the first clock is we need to get to where every single piece of HVAC that is replaced has a heat pump in it. Um, or anything that has a compressor. I've come to be kind of sort of okay with having furnaces. I mean, that's what the 3H program is. It's meant to create hybrids where you put a heat pump on top of a furnace. But um, um, we want to get to where every single piece of equipment that goes in has a heat pump in it. And we want to do that as soon as humanly possible. So the 3H program gets us to 100% by, oh, January 2023. Um, like this is something the supply chain can deal with in 12 months or so because all the parts are there we just need to ramp what some of them are so if we have a solid year to begin ramping should be doable uh, but realistically getting to a hundred percent penetration by 2030 or to where everything is is a heat pump by 2030 is freaking heroic because there are so many bits of inertia that are in the way of doing that so this is my personal goal and hvac 2.0's goal is to make this happen the sooner we can get to the top of this bell curve the better so once we get to where a hundred percent of replacements involve a heat pump then we start about the 20 year replace, uh, replacement clock so like cars last 15 or 20 years hvac systems last 15 or 20 years so once we are replacing every single one that's failing with something that's electric we still have a 20 year time frame until we run through stock um, and it's going to be extremely expensive to speed that up not saying you can't do it but it's really expensive um, so realistically we're looking at 15 or 20 years to get there now the good news is 40 million u.s homes are already electric because the southwest or southeast and the northwest are both predominantly heat pump. They have mild climates and they have reasonable electricity prices. So that's that. So if we want electrification to be fast, we want to avoid that bell cliff. We do not want to do this red curve. We want to do the green one. We want the adoption of residential electrification to be as vertical as possible. Now it can't be this vertical. It's going to take 20 years. So like if we had started in 2000, we're not going to finish until 2020. In this case, if we start in 2030, we're not going to finish till 2050. Um, so the sooner we can get started on that hundred percent replacement, the better. And so if we aren't really careful in program design, we're going to do this. We're going to get stuck in that early market and then shut the program down and, and kill the growth, kill the companies, kill the business model. Can we please not do that? Um, if you've been watching me, you know this is something that I care about. I probably should care less um, because it doesn't pay for squat, at least not yet. Um, but this is a really hairy thing to undo residential decarbonization may be that's i don't know if it's the toughest sector but it's going to be one of the toughest sectors because we have a hundred thousand contractors to get on board and then we have a hundred million homeowners to get on board that's going to be a challenge so think on this can we please avoid bell cliff and uh you know hashtag bell cliff wherever you see something like this happening so i'm nate adams have a good day and if you haven't made a plan for your own life, please go make a plan. How are you going to decarbonize your own life within the next five years or thereabouts? Um, because if you don't have a plan, we really should be quiet about climate because it shows that we don't care. So go make a plan. Basic steps are really simple. I mean, make sure you're buying clean electricity. Get an induction hot plate. 50 or 100 bucks hours time um, then figure out how are you going to replace anything that burns gas in your house and then uh, what electric car actually suits your needs and hopefully budget um, and then the last one the hardest one is hvac so hopefully we'll have a good network soon of hvac 2.0 contractors so that this process won't be too onerous because right now it is to be frank so anyway bell cliff avoid it talk to you next time i'm nate bye-bye Thank you.